Hello, I'm Chris. Today, I'm going to show you how to pass a driving test. Having observed lots of driving tests from the back seat, I've had the opportunity to witness both success and failure. By sharing my knowledge and experience, I hope to help you, along with your instructor, to give you the best chance of passing your driving test. I'll be taking you along a typical driving test route, demonstrating what the examiner expects from you. It's a great day for driving, so let's get started. You'll have to read a number plate and answer a tell me question at the beginning of the test. All the show me tell me questions can be found on our other video. There's a link for it in the description. At the start of the driving test, the examiner might set up the sat-nav. If they don't, then you know that you're going to be following signs at some point instead. I'm not going to be following the sat-nav straight away. The examiner will direct me at the start. They've told me to drive on when I'm ready. Start the car. Now I'll prepare to go. Check mirrors and blind spot. If there aren't any cyclists, pedestrians or other drivers, signalling isn't necessary. But if you're unsure, then signal. I can see between the parked vehicles on the left that there aren't any oncoming. But it's a tight road, so I'll drive slowly ready for any oncoming or pedestrians stepping out. To avoid panicking, always have a plan in mind where you'd go if a vehicle turned into your road. Where could you stop if needed? I'm turning left at the end of the road, and it's quite a wide junction. It's important for me to keep to the left, as this will help others turn right next to me. Always plan to stop, but be prepared to go. Check mirrors, and make progress. It's important when you pull out not to cause another driver to slow down, stop, or swerve. It's safe to get up to the speed limit, and I don't want to be annoying for drivers behind. I'm turning right at the traffic lights. Brake then clutch. First gear, now gas and biting point to creep. Clutch down and brake to stop. Gas and biting point to creep. Planning ahead, a red traffic light. Check the interior mirror before slowing down to see how close the vehicle is behind. Clutch, brake. It's always good to see the vehicle's tyres in front and a bit of road in between, just in case they roll backwards when they move off. Also, if they break down, you'll be able to get round them. While waiting, I've got the parking brake on and selected neutral. Traffic lights are changing, clutch, first gear, gas, biting point and release the parking brake. There's two vehicles in front also turning right. There won't be enough room for me to fit onto this crossroads, so I'll hold back before the cycle area. If I'd stop further ahead then the traffic lights might change back to red, and I could get stuck in the cycle area. But if they start to go and it's still green, then I can move forward. Following the road markings, and the green filter arrow gives me priority. I'm going to be turning right at the crossroads. This crossroads is a bit different to the last one. The markings in the middle show that I should take an offside to offside position. That's where the oncoming traffic also turning right should go to my right hand side. Someone failed their test here before because the oncoming vehicle took a near side to near side position. That's where they turned to your left hand side and confused the person taking their test. The test candidate stopped half onto the crossroads, not knowing how to react. The traffic lights then changed back to red, with the test candidate half out onto the crossroads waiting. The examiner later told them that despite the markings indicating they should position themselves in an offside to offside position, they should have adapted by taking the near side to near side position to safely get through the crossroads. Pedestrians have red, I'm next. I've got to give way to oncoming. And you can see the markings show that I should take an offside to offside position, which the oncoming are doing as well. They're going to my right and round the back. I just need to creep round here a little bit to make space and wait here. I can make this without affecting the oncoming driver. Always look out for any signs. They're all there to help. Looks like a width restriction coming up. Be prepared and try and go through it straight, rather than at an angle. 
At the mini roundabout, I'm turning left. Give way to the right, observe early, keep checking, it's clear. Don't forget, the tighter the gap, the slower you drive. Be careful when driving around a bend to the right. It's easy to cut the corner and drive over the centre markings, but you might meet an oncoming vehicle, which would be dangerous. If you have trouble with road positioning on bends, then try not to look round the bend for too long as you approach. Prolonged staring might cause you to steer towards what you're fixated on, resulting in turning too early and cutting the road. To help with your positioning, and this applies to drive around a bend to the left too, look ahead at the centre of your lane, or your side of the road. It's also important to have quick glances at what's around the bend to see what's coming up. But if you stare, then you might steer towards where you're looking and cut the corner. You might feel like you're driving really slow on a long road like this, and it can be easy to drive over the 30 miles per hour speed limit without realising. So just keep an eye on the speedo, and you will get used to the sound of the engine at 30 miles per hour too. The examiner will ask you to pull up on the left about five times. When parking, I normally get the curb lined up around here, but I'm also checking the left-hand mirror to make sure it doesn't end up in the bush. The examiner has now told me to follow directions given by the sat-nav. they let me know when the independent driving is finished and to drive on when I'm ready. The sat-nav does show what it thinks is the speed limit, but don't trust it as it's not reliable. So just use the sat-nav for directions only. Check mirrors, blind spot and signal. Someone getting in their car, always remember less space less speed, and always be ready to stop if it's too tight. I'm taking the next road on the right. Turn right. I can use this central area to get out of the way of vehicles behind. Give way to oncoming, first gear. Line up and turn. If I hadn't positioned in that central area properly for turning right, and block vehicles behind who wanted to get past, then I would have failed my driving test there. The examiner wants me to pull up on the left in a safe place, check mirrors, signal, steer left to get the front in, then steer right to get the back in, and then straighten the wheels. The examiner might tell you to ignore the driveways, but if they don't, then be careful not to block them. They'll then tell you to drive on when you're ready. Prepare the car, check mirrors, blind spot, and signal if necessary. But only drive on when it's completely safe, as you don't want to affect another road user. I didn't need to signal that time as there was no one around. A lot of accidents happen at junctions. Try and anticipate what might happen next, but also be careful not to overreact. Don't forget to check the interior mirror before slowing down to see how close following vehicles are behind. I'm turning left at the end of the road, Turn left, then take the second right. And I'm going to keep extra left as this will help any oncoming drive round the lorry. A little hill start. The parking brake can really help. When you see an opportunity coming up, it allows you to set the gas and find a biting point without any fear of rolling backwards. Accelerate if it's safe, as you don't want to get in the way of anyone. After 200 yards, turn right. Don't just listen to the sat-nav, but occasionally glance at the screen to see where you're going next. Turn right. Have a look at what's in the road you're turning into, and try and be ready for anything. Have a slow approach, and you might not need to stop. The examiner's asked me to pull up on the left, on a hill. The hill will slow me down, so I've got to be careful not to brake too early, otherwise the car will stop before I've parked. Parking brake on, select neutral. When moving off on a hill, it's crucial that you set enough gas, so that the car doesn't stall, and that you find the biting point. 
Without the biting point, the car will roll back. I've also got to make sure that there's no one coming, as it's quite tight. Don't forget, the less you see ahead, the slower you should drive. Always have a plan in mind where you would stop if there was one coming, so that you don't panic. Turn right. Check mirrors, signal, clutch down, first gear, lots of observations, no need to stop, gas, biting point, slowly raising the clutch. Moped stopping, check mirrors, all safe. Always keep planning ahead. Look out for any signs or markings. They're all there to help you. A width restriction. A little bit awkward this one as I need to steer left, steer right, and try and go through as straight as possible, little steering. Check the interior mirror and the left mirror before moving to the left. Now check the interior and the right mirror before moving back out to the right. It's so easy to forget about the mirrors when moving in and out of spaces. But one day, there will be someone coming up to the side of you and you need to be able to react to them. I'm turning right at the end of this road and although it might be tempting, you can't move out and block half the road as you might get in the way of someone. Instead, just be patient and wait for it to be clear both sides. If someone lets you out and it's safe, then you can move out and block them. When waiting at a junction for what seems like an eternity, it's common to worry about what people behind might be thinking, Turn left. and if you're going to fail for hesitation. I know it's easier said than done, but try not to think about drivers behind, even if they're using their horn. Just be patient, and try to take the first safe opportunity. Go right on the roundabout, and take the second exit. I'm turning right at the roundabout. I've already checked the mirrors, and signal right. Tricky to see to the right of the fence. First gear. Now I can see to the right. Parking brake on. Give way to the right. And it's safe to go. The parking brake really helps, as you can then have the gas pedal ready, instead of the foot brake, which means that you can pull away faster with less chance of stalling. Check the mirrors before moving out around the parked vehicle just in case anyone's overtaking you. After 300 yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit. Check the mirrors before moving out to the right and then check the mirrors before moving back to the left. Planning ahead, it's getting a bit more crowded. Always slow down for tight spaces, it makes them easier to judge Cross the roundabout and take the second exit And more comfortable It all looks blocked up on my right, but I'm still going to be careful as a bike could still get through You can't assume anything when driving, it's safer to check and double check Think carefully before overtaking cyclists you should leave at least one and a half meters when overtaking at speeds up to 30 miles per hour. After 300 yards, cross the roundabout and take the first exit. And give them more space when overtaking at higher speeds. Don't feel pressure to overtake, even if you see vehicles queuing up behind. Be patient and wait for a safe opportunity to overtake. Definitely not on or before a bend, or if the road's tight. Imagine the cyclist is the size of a car. Would you overtake a car now? Cross the roundabout and take the first exit. The cyclist is turning right. I'm going ahead, so no signal needed. All clear to the right and safe to go.
Before moving to the left, check the interior and the left mirror. Before moving out to the right, check the interior and the right mirror. Check in the mirrors towards where you're going to steer. Interior left to go left, interior right to go right. A 40 miles per hour speed limit coming up, but don't make the serious mistake of increasing speed before the sign, as the sign shows where the new speed limit starts. So it's only 40 after the sign. After 350 yards, turn right. Make progress if it's safe. In dry conditions, you should keep at least the two second gap from the vehicle in front. Here's how you work it out. When the vehicle in front passes a fixed point like a sign, you then count how long it takes for you to reach that point. If it's less than two seconds, then you're too close and you should slow down to increase the distance. If you're driving in wet conditions, then you'd have to keep at least a four second gap. Especially in the summer, overgrown trees can hide signs. So as usual, keep scanning the road for any signs or any information that can help you. At the roundabout, I'm following the road ahead. Second exit. I need to keep in the left hand lane. Now I'll check the mirrors and signal to exit. It was important to keep left as I had another vehicle next to me turning right. Now after driving on faster roads, 30 might feel a bit slow, so just keep an eye on your speed. After 300 yards, you have reached your destination. Once you've reached your destination on the sat-nav, the examiner will tell you that it's the end of the independent driving and they will direct you from here. You have reached your destination. At any point during your driving test, the examiner will ask you a show me question, where you'd have to show them how you'd carry out a safety task while you're driving such as, show me how you'd open and close your side window. All the show me tell me questions can be found on our website. I'll leave a link for them in the description. You'll do one reversing maneuver during the test. You may be asked to pull up on the right hand side of the road like this, and then reverse two car limbs. Or you might have to reverse park behind another vehicle within two car lengths. Or forward bay park. Or reverse bay park in a car park. Have a look at our other video for tips on how to do all the driving test manoeuvres. There's a link in the description. I've now got to reverse roughly two car lengths, keeping it reasonably close to the kerb. Minimal steering. Driving really slow. Stop in if anyone gets near you. After reversing roughly two car lengths, the examiner tells you to stop. And then to drive on once it's safe. I've got to take the next road on the left, check mirrors and signal and then left again. Although I can see to the right, it's very closed and hard to see to the left, so definitely first gear. As always, keep planning ahead and look out for any passing places. Always have a plan in mind where you would go if there was one coming. There's a space up there on the left that I could use. Someone walking in the road, but it looks wide enough. I'll go through slowly. This road might look a bit confusing, but as usual, the signs really help. It's still a two-way road, so I've got to expect oncoming. I'm turning left at the end of the road, and I can see a stop sign and a stop line. So I've got to come to a complete stop, even if the road is clear. They normally have stop signs at dangerous junctions where accidents have happened before, so make sure you stop and observe properly. Well that's the end of my driving test route today. If you want to know what the top 10 reasons are for failing a UK driving test, then watch this video next. Thanks a lot for watching, please give it a like if it helped, 
and subscribing really helps us make more videos. Wish you all the best if you have a driving test coming up soon and let us know in the comments below how you got on. In the meantime, keep safe on the road and bye for now.